If you're going to be taking the SAT, you'll definitely need to know how to solve a problem like this. Now, to do that, you'll need a really good understanding of how to add and subtract square roots and radicals and how to simplify radicals or square roots. So let's take a look at how we work through this problem step by step. All right, so here is our problem. We have the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45. Now to solve this without using a calculator, we need to understand two skills. And the first, or basically uh, two rules, the first rule or concept we need to understand is the rules to add and subtract square roots. And then the second thing you need to understand in this particular problem is how to simplify a square root. So let's take a look at a basic example here before we get into this problem. So let's say I had three times the square root of seven plus one times the square root of seven, or maybe let's say two times the square root of seven. Okay, so what is the rule to add and subtract square roots? Well, basically, if you have the exact same square root, in this case, in this problem, we're trying to add these two values and they both have the square root of seven. So when you have the exact same square root, you can add these square roots by adding the numbers in front of the square root. So here we have three times the square root of seven or three square root of seven plus two square root of seven. So our answer is gonna be three plus two or five times the square root of seven. Okay, so this is the basic rule to add and subtract square roots. Now in our problem, you might be saying, well, we really can't add these because these square roots are different. Well, that's not actually the case because in order to determine whether we can add and subtract square roots, you need to fully simplify each square root to determine whether or not it actually has the same square root value. Okay, so let's talk about how to do that. And in order to simplify square roots, we're looking for something called perfect square, per, let me write this better, perfect square factors, all right? So these are numbers like four, nine, 16, 25, et cetera. So these numbers are perfect square factors because when we take the square root of these numbers, we get lovely numbers like two, three, four, five, et cetera. Okay, so we're looking for these type of numbers, these perfect squares as factors. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so here we have the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45. Now, what we wanna do is look at our values. We'll start with the square root of 20 first and think about these perfect square factors, right? Numbers like four, nine, 16, and 25. And we wanna ask ourselves, do we have any factors of this number that are perfect squares? Okay, in other words, do any of these numbers divide into this number right here? Okay, now of course we can see four times five. Factors are two numbers that such that when you multiply them together, you get another number. Or let's, uh, let me kind of restate that differently. Factors of 20 are four and five, two and 10, etc. Okay, so such that these factors, when you multiply them together, you're gonna get back to the original value but what we're looking for are perfect square factors. So we're not really interested in let's say two times 10. We could factor 20 as two times 10, but two and 10 are not perfect squares. However, four and five, four is a perfect square. So we wanna think of 20 as four times five. And then over here with 45, we can break, that up, break this up as nine times five. If you're gonna be taking the SAT, you don't wanna take a chance on a low score because of weak math skills. So instead of guessing on math questions, why not answer them confidently? So make sure to check out my full SAT math test prep course. It's very comprehensive with easy to follow step-by-step -step lessons just like this and much, much more. So if you wanna check it out, just follow the link in the description. Okay, so nine is a perfect square factor and four is a perfect square factor. So our next step is we want to think of 20 as the square, or the square root of 20 as the square root of four times five and the square root of 45 as the square root of nine times five. Okay, so why is this so important? Well, we have a rule when we're thinking about square roots and that is we can actually break up one big square root into its independent factors. 
So the square root of 4 times 5, we can separate these factors into their own individual square roots. So we can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Likewise, over here, we can write the square root of 9 times 5 as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. Now, this is really advantageous because we can take the square roots of these perfect square factors. Okay, so the square root of 4, of course, is 2. Matter of fact, let's go down here and take a look at our final steps. So the square root of 4 is 2. So this value right here, which was the square root of 20, really is 2 times the square root of 5. So we fully simplified that square root. And then over here, the square root of 45 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. But we can rewrite that by taking the square root of 9. And of course, that is 3. So the square root of 45 really is 3 times the square root of 5. Okay, so now we can make the determination whether we can add these square roots. Now, of course, we can because they both have the square root of 5. So our final answer is going to be 2 plus 3, which, of course, is 5 times uh, the square root of 5. So our final answer is 5 times the square root of 5. All right, so I hope this video helped you out. And if you are preparing for the SAT and want more step-by-step -step practice like this, make sure to check out my full SAT math test prep course. You can find a link to it in the description of this video.